Okay, guys. You're going to be looking at being able to find domain algebraically. I'm not trying to be Captain Obvious here, but you've been doing domain and range graphically, and they have limitations. Um, if your answers aren't nice whole numbers or they aren't graphs that you recognize, you don't know what to do. So I'm just going to run through finding domain, just domain, graphically quick to transition to algebraically and see if you can predict how to do it. This parabola is four units left, three units up, and it's opening down. So the domain, left, right, no gaps in the middle, the domain is our reals. This one, you got a vertical asymptote, five units right, horizontal asymptote, three units down, and because it's a hyperbola, oops, that's what I'm looking for, and the value of A is positive, it's sitting in the positive orientation. Okay, so the domain, can you go as far left as you want? Can you go as far right as you want? Yeah, but there's a gap in the middle. Where does the gap occur? It occurs at the asymptote, five, so X cannot be five. This one, the graph is very similar as far as the asymptotes go, five units right, three units down. But this time, it's an inverse square. A is positive, so it's sitting here and here. Oops, a little bit. I'm crossing that asymptote. Can you go as far left as you want? Yeah, as far right as you want? Yeah, but there's a gap in the middle. Where's the gap? The gap occurs at 5. So x cannot be 5. This one, absolute value graph. 3 left, 2 down. It's opening up because A is positive, so roughly, there it is, domain, all reals. Left, right, no gaps, it's all reals. So the square root graph, three units right, seven units up, and the value of A is positive, so it's the upper half of a sideways parabola. The domain, can you go as far left as you want? Nope, you can only go as far left as three, so x is greater than or equal to 3. Now you guys should see there are two of them where your domain is all real numbers. Three of them it's not. Take this number, fill it into the bottom. x can't be 5 because if you do, you divide by 0. Same thing is true in this one. Dividing by 0, oops, is a bad thing. Okay, that creates a problem in the domain whenever you're dividing by zero. So that's one that you can look for. Algebraically, is there a way to make the denominator zero? Well, this doesn't have a denominator. It's all over one if you want to think of it that way. There's no way to make the bottom zero. So there isn't a problem in the domain. This one's different. You guys know we try and avoid getting any negative numbers underneath an even root. It's a square root, okay? Or if you had a fourth root, you try and avoid getting negative numbers underneath there. Generally, they, then it involves I and everyone gets upset and it's like, okay. So what do we want to do? We want to try and avoid getting a negative under there. So that means whatever is inside that even root has to be greater than or equal to zero. And you solve it and you get the domain. So the two conditions are you want to make sure you aren't dividing by zero and no negatives under even roots. So let's work through it. I don't have, so the two questions are, do you have an even root? Nope. Do you have a variable in the denominator? Yeah, I do. Take what's in the denominator and set that not equal to zero. So 2x minus 5 is not equal to 0. Add the 5, divide by 2. x cannot be 5 halves. That's the domain. You can do anything it wants. Just don't be that number, otherwise you're dividing by 0. This one. You've got this stuff underneath an even root. So I don't want that stuff to be negative. I want to control it and make sure it's positive. Add the 5, divide by 2 x greater than or equal to 5 halves. Okay. Well, what if you got both things going on? Something under a root and something in the denominator? Well, you do them both then. 
So 2x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which we did, and it was x has to be greater than or equal to 5 halves. And x minus 5 cannot be 0. So you get x cannot be 5. So it's both things. Okay. If I were to look at this on a number line, there's 5 halves, or 2 and a half, closed circle, shaded right. Okay. Now, that's a closed circle. Quite the mess there. But I've got this other piece of information here that says x can't be 5. So at 5, there would be an open circle. Okay, doesn't look like much, looks like an absolute mess, but there you go. Writing it in that interval notation, what you'd have is bracket, 5 halves, comma, 5, paren, paren, 5, infinity, is what it would be. Okay. Um, this one, I guess hold off on this idea here for a minute. This thing you guys should recognize as a parabola. Wherever that parabola is, it doesn't matter if it's hanging out over here, if it's hanging out down there, it doesn't matter. We know it's opening up because A is positive. I'm just illustrating the point. It doesn't matter where it is. If the question is domain, can you go as far left as you want? Yeah. Can you go as far right as you want? Absolutely. No holes or gaps. All parabolas have a domain that's all reals. Now go back to the two questions that I said you need to worry about. Do you have a variable in the denominator? No. Do you have a variable inside an even root? No. So, it's all reals. And again, if you're not sure what I mean by even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, those are even roots. Okay? Oops. What if you have a variable in the bottom and a root in the bottom? This stuff, normally, you would simply say, 2x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. But you're in the denominator, so it can't be the equal to 0. It strictly has to be greater than 0. So x is greater than 5 halves. The questions are, do you have a variable inside an even root? Do you, oops, do you have a variable in a denominator? Yeah, I got variables in the denominator. Notice this up here didn't even enter in the conversation. It's not in a root. It's not in a denominator. So as far as domain goes, you ignore this piece of it. This, you have to ask, cannot be zero. Well, we've been looking at how to do it. You guys either do the quadratic formula or factor it. Oops, I don't know why I wrote three. Good thing one of us is paying attention because it's apparently not me. I prefer to factor it. Because the leading coefficient is 1, you can ask what multiplies to 6 and adds to 5. And we've been practicing the zero product property, something times something, it equals 0. One of those two things has to be worth 0. Otherwise, it's not 0. So that means x plus 3 is worth 0, or x plus 2 is worth 0. So x is negative 3, or x is equal to negative 2. Okay? One like this. Again, the numerator, you don't care about. When is x squared plus 5x equal to 0? You guys had some of these on a previous test. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <laughs> Thank you. If you look and see what's in common, there's an x in common. You're left with x plus 5 equals 0. So you set those two things equal to 0. So x equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. So x is 0 or negative 5. Now that's what's going to make the bottom 0. Oops, I should go back up and catch it here. Those are what make the bottom 0. So they need to be not equal to. Sorry, I didn't catch that on the last one. So these have to be not equal to. It's what's making the bottom zero, so I set it not equal to. I did it there and then forgot to transfer it through. So sorry about that, guys. Okay. So on this one, we did the bottom already. X 
can't be 0, and x cannot be negative 5. So now I need to worry about the top, this piece here. 5x plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 5x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths. And this information. Now, if I list all three, it's a bit redundant. Trying to graph this on a number line, I you know, my drawing skills are poor. If I put 0 here, negative 5 there, and so if that's negative 1, I'm going to have a closed circle here at negative 4 fifths, and then I'm shading right. Try and do that a little cleaner than last one. This piece says that there's an open circle at 0. Okay, I get that. And also an open circle at negative 5. And it's like, well, if I were to just say this much, wouldn't I take care of everything? Do I really need to mention that it can't be negative 5? If I just say this much. So, saying it with brackets, um, I start at negative 4 fifths. I go to 0. Then I start at 0 and go to infinity. Okay? We don't really need to mention the negative 5 because it's, it's not in the picture. Well, that seems about it. So the two questions, I guess if I do go to another page, you need to act, remind yourself, when you're given an equation, you want to know what the domain is, the two questions you ask, do you have a variable underneath an even root? So a square root, fourth root, and so on. If you do, you set that stuff greater than or equal to zero and solve for it. <clears throat> Unless it's in the denominator, the even root is down in the denominator, then you take the stuff that's inside it and strictly set that stuff greater than zero because we can't let it be zero, otherwise you're dividing by zero. The other set of questions, that's question one, do you have an even root? Question two, do you have a variable in the denominator? If you do, whatever that is, set it not equal to zero and solve for what values of x would turn the bottom into zero. And we've been practicing various methods of solving equations. Whatever is upstairs is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Because what you're trying to do is discover what's going to make it divide by zero. These are the only two situations that you guys have ever encountered that when you type stuff in your calculator is going to cause your calculator to say error. That's the domain question. Do you have any variables and even roots? Are you dividing by zero?